What's going on, everybody? So, eBay, Breakers, man, talk of the night. I had so many messages on this stuff. We're going to hit it. We're going to hit it today in some hobby news. Going to talk a little bit of my experience when I was a breaker. I know we're talking five plus years ago. I used eBay. Um, what I think this means, what they sh hopefully are doing with this, and you know, I, I just look at this. How many breakers go out of business from this? If you're solely relying on eBay to be your standpoint on somebody else's platform to be a breaker. Maybe you should go look at doing something else. And I mean, that's just me being blunt honest. Um, so everybody knows I was a breaker back in the day. No longer do it and all that stuff. It was just, it got too crazy. Too crazy with pricing and everything like that. It wasn't fun no more, especially when you saw people spending $1,500 on a team and they got nothing. And they do it three times and they got nothing. That sucks. I just, it just didn't make sense to me. And I knew eventually people were going to go in debt. You're going to see all kind of chargebacks and all this. And I just moved away. I'd rather sell the product, you know, unopened. So I, I did do eBay breaks. I want to say 17, 18. Some of you guys that know me probably can quote it better. Just eBay. I'm not talking about breaks afterwards on Facebook and that. eBay was a good stepping stone because I started off on Breakers TV. Of course, YouTube was a backup. And... Breakers TV, it was a fight. I mean, you had to try to get in the top levels, you know, and it depended on chat and all this other stuff going on. You know, there was a ton of people at one time frame. I used to sell my stuff weekly off of my website because didn't cure that many fees I did eBay. Whatever was left, everybody knew I was putting up as one-day auctions. I was hoping it would be under 15 teams. Throw them up there. Let everybody else, you know, bid on to them. And hopefully bring in new people from that community that would be repeat buyers. But like, hey, I like this guy and stuff like this. I'm going to break with him in the future. Which, it, it did happen that way. It was really good to me. I can't complain. There were a lot of people that were on there that were bigger than me as eBay breakers. I remember, I believe it was Badger Breaks was one. Um, oh, I'm trying to remember the other guys. I believe Gator Box Breaks might have been on eBay at one time frame. And a couple other guys. But I remember we used to send email messages back and forth just, you know, trying to see what the other guy was doing and being cordial. And there was never no harm, no foul on to it. But during this time frame, I had some of the bigger breakers like, man, if you're relying on one platform, what happens if this platform says you can't be a breaker no more? They're like, hey, we're shutting our door lights off. What are you going to do then? This is what eBay's doing, basically, a lot of people, in a way. They're shutting the door on a lot of people. And a lot of people think they're going to go out of business. I've seen comments, oh, my family ain't going to be eat, my dog ain't going to be able to eat, my grandma ain't going to be able to eat, da-da-da-da. Hey, hard talk right here. You might like it, you might not. If you are a business owner, you cannot rely on one platform that is owned by somebody else. You need to be like, all right, God, I have till July 18th, that's one month, to rebrand myself on other stuff. And so what I'm going to do is all my customers, I'm going to now stream it on YouTube, do my breaks. And hopefully everybody will come find me on YouTube. Be like, hey, from here on out, my breaks are going to be still on YouTube. Here's a cheap website, you know, you pay $40 a month for. Buy your breaks through there. You have to be an event of haunt to this. You can't just say, oh, no, it's the end of the world, all this stuff like that there. It's not. And if you're not a big breaker, you're like, oh, they're only giving big breakers privilege. You got to remember, the big breakers, some of them on there, they put in time, work, and effort to get to where they are. If you're only doing this, you know, a couple nights a week, one night a week, a couple days a week, and you're only doing a box here, box there, and these guys are rolling through case, 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 half case, you know, mixers and all this, they're putting in time. That's why eBay's going to keep them because they have, you know, they're one, they're getting money from them, a lot of money. And two, you know, they're hopefully looking at their background saying, hey, this guy has credentials. They got their EIN. They got sales tax licenses. They have actual distributors that you have to have these licenses to get product from and all this other stuff. And I'm hoping that there's some kind of backstory why eBay's doing this. Now, whether... It's, you know, in competition with, like, these guys on whatnot that are, like, 
exclusive whatnot breakers and sellers. And I know Fanatics is trying to do the same thing. Maybe eBay's trying to hit it now before they lose some of their big clients. I don't know offhand. Um, I know back, I don't think it was late 17, eBay had a questionnaire come out whenever you... So when I was breaking on eBay, you had to really watch your wording. And that's where a lot of us came into play to help each other out on the wording. Then all of a sudden they allowed breaking, okay? During that time frame, they had a questionnaire come out. I'll maybe maybe people remember there were breakers back then. I filled mine out. Oh, I don't know, four or six weeks later, I get an email. Would I be interested in doing a phone conversation with an employee at eBay? Blah, 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 blah. Like, ah, what the hell? We'll do it. They called direct time, all that stuff with me, man. It's great. Had a good conversation. I told them, listen, a lot of these guys, they're buying their stuff from like Steel City, Blowout, David Adams, yada, da, da, da. They probably don't even have real licensing and everything like that there. If you're establishing breaking, you know, a Dunn's number, all this other stuff. I mean, I told him I would prefer that, you know, you have some type of credentials to do it other than just letting every Tom, Dick, Harry, Shelly, Nancy, and Karen out there be a breaker. And I explained my points across. They took consideration. They never used it. And now we're at this stepping stone onto it. I mean, I'm not saying, you know... My words, I know were heard in the, that whenever they did the little questionnaire live on the phone call and that, but I, they never implemented any of this stuff. To me, you have to have something on to it. How many people remember Breaker Culture? Come on, guys, raise your hand. Oh, raise your hand right here. Yep, Breaker Culture back in the day. It was a place where you go on there and you could read reviews about your breakers. You could say, oh, crap, I don't want to get with them, man. They don't ship good, da-da-da-da, they take too long to fill, whatever it may be. Good idea. I think they lasted maybe like a year. Year max, guys. Who, who know what Brig Culture is? What do you say? About a year they were out there? Um, uh, Group break checklist. You guys used to have a, a list of all the breakers. Uh, I think uh, was it was a Tom Wolf. You run that if you're watching this. Do you guys still do that? I, I haven't looked in a long time frame. Uh, on group break checklist to see if they have a list of breakers or not. Trying to think here, some of the other stuff. But, I mean, stuff's evolved over so much time here. A lot of it during COVID. Where COVID just shot things out the roof and everybody wants to get rich quick. All right? Get rich quick schemes. Breaking was never like that. Like, I, you know, I tell people, you know, back in the day, making $100 on a break that was, you know, a low-end product was really, really good. A lot of time. A lot of effort put into it. You know, you had to break X amount sometimes to get the better product and all this other stuff. Days when <laughs> your um, what do you call it? account rep would call you up. Dude, take five more cases, please. I'll give you 30 days to pay for it. Blah, 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 blah. Those days went away very, very quickly. But with eBay here sending this out and reading through what I call the toilet read, it's quite humorous on some of it because... Oh, eBay shutting the doors. They're going to drive me out of business. If you're relying on eBay as your sole thing, yeah, they are going to drive you out of business. I mean, you're not on there just, you know, selling individual cards anymore. You're out there, you know, using their platform to get their customers to buy from you. And we don't know what the backstory is. Maybe they've had to kick out X amount of dollars over time because of crap that went on. And it's come out of their pockets. I don't know. Maybe at this time frame, they see this as being the biggest issue and problem that's tying up with complaints in some of their departments to where they can't help other customers that have, you know, uh, other complaints or, you know, whatever's going on with them out there. And that's caused them to outsource more time, more employees, and they figure, hey, if we get rid of this, it saves the company X amount of dollars. I, I don't know. There has to be more of a backstory from eBay other than this right here onto it. And that's why I wanted to look into more. Maybe some of you guys know more into it. I don't know. I do know that when I read through this and you look at it, it talks about the, in this post, sellers who have been pre-approved to sell live breaks will be contacted directly. I understand two guys already know that they're staying with eBay. I, I don't know if they're allowed to discuss any aspect of that. Um, or even if they do tell me something, if I'm allowed to even put it out, because it could be like, hey, 
you know, we're not supposed to say this, but this is the deal on to a type deal. You guys know how that stuff goes in between good friends and stuff out there. But I don't know. I don't see this as being a bad thing until I see how it's implemented, how it affects everything out there. Maybe you're weeding out the rubbish. I don't know. And the sad part is there might be whenever they're weeding out the rubbish, some good small time breakers go away because of it. It's just part of the natural nutrition cycle that will end up happening. Again, there's plenty of different opportunities out there for these guys. You just got to put in hard work and time. I mean, from what time that I started breaking, okay, I could think of a handful of guys that are still around. Firehand. Platinum card breaks. Even though I don't think all the guys that started platinum are with platinum anymore. I think that's about all I can go into on that. The Monster Den, GV Sports, G1 Cards. I think I said Firehand already. Um, Layton. Of course, still City and Dave and Adam still do their things. But those are probably the only ones I can really think of. I'm sure there might be some other ones out there. I just haven't broke with them in a long time. I think Wolf used to. I don't know if he still does it or not. Last time I heard about Wolf, he couldn't do PayPal payments anymore or something. Trying to think who else was around back then, but uh, there's very few left out there of the, I don't know, you can call it the OG crew or whatever you want to out there, left out there. I've heard some breakers I haven't heard about in years are now back. We'll save that a little bit for another video coming up. You guys got to watch the three minute video I got coming up. Man, old school breaker, man, that broke the internet. Yeah, that's not a scam either. But with this here, uh, while it is hobby news, it affects a lot of people. You know, at the same time frame, hopefully, you had other avenues that you could do this on. To where you could reach back to your customers saying, hey, I can no longer do breaks on here. Or during your breaks, you know, you send them to another platform. To where you're doing the viewer viewing of the break and stuff like that. Maybe say, hey, from now on, everything's got to be handled here after July 18th, blah, 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 blah. Maybe people stay. Maybe you have to go and pay whatnot fees or loop fees or I don't know where else uh, that strictly like sports cards because Twitch and YouTube, IG. Uh, I don't know if you can do breaks on Twitter or not, but there's going to be other opportunities. You just got to find them, put in the work. And hopefully it works out. If not, hey, move on. You gotta find something else that works out there eventually. Why some of the best in the game have to reinvent themselves time after time after time after time again and tweak every so often onto it. And trust me, when I was a breaker, all these like sudden things or big things like that suck, but you just had to always turn around and see what's next onto it. A lot of it dealt with uh, just a distribution of the product. Couldn't tell you how many times that we hated our reps and hated everything out there. And all of us would talk behind. And we're like, well, I was told this. I was told this from my rep. Da, 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 da. Well, we share the same rep, and he told me this. I'm like, what the hell is going on with all this? You know, in everyday life, you're going to have drama. You're going to have events that affect you. It's how you bounce back. And basically, you know, switch the mind to think, how do I become better not using this platform? Do I go into my own platform where there's my own website where these people can buy? My customers can buy. They can find me. Do I have the money? Does it make sense to do all this? You know, you have to re relook at it all. Does Is it going to behoove you to do it in the long run? Hopefully eBay selects the right breakers um, to keep on to there for them. We'll see how this all turns out here in the near future. Guys, other than that, I've been blabbing way, way, way too long. I'm out. Catch you guys next video. Gotta watch the next video. A warning ahead of time. If your significant other or children in the room, they need to do a bot face and head on out on that next video. Later, guys.